here and we are at the home of Tim Burris and he's showing us chrysalis and butterflies and what they like and um, were you going to talk some about uh, Bloomtown, Mississippi? Bloomtown, Bloom Bloomtown Mississippi yeah, is, a, is a program that I'm a part of. Uh, I am working with uh, Donna Yowell. She is uh, over the uh, Memphis, uh, Memphis, Mississippi Urban Forestry Council, and uh, she's also the uh, chief cook and bottle washer over a uh, Bloomtown project, which is where we try to involve all the communities, uh, garden clubs, master gardeners, individuals, into becoming a part of this project. And membership goes from forty dollars to one hundred and twenty-five dollars, depending on who you are. Individuals is forty dollars. You get about two hundred and fifty bulbs free when you join. Uh, a community partnership, one hundred and twenty-five dollars. You get about a thousand bulbs of plants to plant. Okay. All right. This plant is called Bonari, B-O-N-A-R-I. Uh, that is the the right name for it. In my garden, this is verbena on a stick. We call things what we want to call them, and in your garden it can be Bonari, and in my garden it's verbena on a stick. Uh, it's kin to this one over here, which is Homestead Purple uh, Verbena. Behind it, it pairs well with uh, the New Gold Lantana. The Zinnias, which are great nectar plants for the butterflies with the roses and the abelias and the uh, hydrangeas in the background. Panning to your left, you get a little bit of a, another bit plant that I don't know the name of, but then on the other side, you can zoom in on this, and it's uh, called uh, bee balm, which is a great plant for the bees. I mean, they just cover it up. The hotter that it is, the better they like it. Uh, and then the butterfly house, uh, which we have not started using yet this year. But the fact of it is, this is where we will put chrysalis to protect them from predators, which are wasps, grasshoppers, uh, praying mantis, all such as that. And we'll put them in there and we'll tie them up to the ceiling and protect them. If you look up at the top, right there at the edge of the butterfly house, you'll see a chrysalis. Uh, caterpillars tend to wander 50 to 100 feet from their host plant before they make a chrysalis. And I'll show you several chrysalis around the house as we go. Uh, we use the elephant ears just to give the garden a tropical feel and a cool feeling. Uh, they, what they do here is uh, they kind of blow in the breeze and just kind of give it that gentle sway. And then to your left and uh, behind you here, we have uh, the American Beautyberry. This is great bird food. In the fall, this will be filled with purple berries. Uh, the uh, birds will just love it. Uh, in the garden today, you're going to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is the midsummer blues or the ragtag midsummer look. So you're going to see some of the rough looking stuff and you're going to see all the pretty stuff. So if you'll kind of come along, this is a pawpaw tree. Uh, it's a host plant for a butterfly. Uh, one of the swallowtails and we're hoping to have one before long. Uh, on down, they're just kind of follow me. We have several of these in the garden. This is called a Dutchman's pipe vine. And uh, if you'll come on down here, I'll show you some eggs. Uh, let me find them here. Sometimes they're hard to find or they may have already hatched since I've been down here this morning. No, here we go. All right, you're gonna have to zoom in on this. Uh, get up really close. See all those little orange things? Those are pipe vine swallowtail eggs. And uh, they usually lay those eggs in clusters of 12 to 15. When they're born, the first thing they do is eat their egg. And then they eat the leaf that they're on. And then they'll start moving to other leaves. And you can kind of see. Let's see if we can find you one here. Uh, right here this is a pipe vine swallowtail caterpillar he's about the third end star if you want to come in and catch a look at him uh, these guys are not they won't hurt you they're just really soft they're really fragile 
Uh, I love this is my favorite caterpillar the pipe vine swallowtail I, he's just so cute looking and you can kind of get him and uh, you just kind of get him off you lay him up on your arm and uh, you can see he won't hurt you at all now he's kind of a little ill he's looking for food mm -hmm. uh, but um, this is the one that seems to uh, kids fear the most this was the last caterpillar in the whole landscape that I was able to touch uh, I wasn't able to get a hold of this guy very quick because he scared me caterpillars for in general won't bother you uh, the caterpillars for the moths that are hairy or fuzzy will uh, sometimes sting so we kind of put him back on the leaf there and we turn him over gently because the pipe vine swallowtail his defense mechanism when you grab at him or you shake the leaf is his own is he falls to the ground and runs and hides so this one is generally covered uh, they're starting to eat it down uh, we may find some little bitsy somewhere uh, I have some in other places uh, this is one of Janet's favorite Japanese maples it's called a Bini Shishangi uh, it's green right now it has yellow tinted edges in the early spring it has pink tinted edges and then this is another one over here it's another variety uh, as you can see things are a little bit wild looking around here we don't always get all the stuff everything out uh, we have sedums uh, and here's a good example of what happens when a Japanese maple in the hot sun the leaves tend to get burned and they get brown looking and they want to fall off you know don't worry about it next spring this plant will come back and it will look just like this it will look just like this it will come back fully strong and then sometimes red this one is an Italia and uh, it's really pe uh, really neat some of them we call pumpkin spice azaleas are great nectar food as you can tell nectars come I mean azaleas come and azaleas go this one's starting to fade out uh, this is these are called lace caps and uh, these over here are called panicles because they make a bigger bloom you know and they have uh, this one is actually a powder blue green and white and crimson uh, let's see if we can find something right here on this pipe vine while we're here uh, I'd like to show you some little bitsies if I can find them they uh, they hide uh, oh here we go perfect look right here little bitsy see this guy right here he's a little bitsy version uh, this is a pipe vine swallowtail and the butterflies are running everywhere and they're hard to catch on camera folks but uh, they're pretty neat kids if you can catch them uh, I'm going to uh, as you notice here I got this is called a sleeve uh, this is a spice bush and uh, some of the caterpillars I try to protect this one in particular is the spice bush swallowtail and I try to protect this guy because uh, this is your state caterpillar and your state butterfly the spice bush swallowtail let's see if we can find his leaf uh, let's hope he's still there he didn't escape up oh, here we go right here if it didn't anything get him uh, you see they fold the leaf up like a taco now he's a little bitsy this is a spice bush swallowtail he's a little bitsy and uh, he's about second in star now uh, normally caterpillars when they hatch out of their eggs are about the size of your eyelash and in that one you're gonna see a chrysalis after he's already formed a chrysalis he has two dots on the top of his head and uh, they're there to make you think he's a snake 
they're not really eyes uh, he wants you to think he's a snake so that you will leave him alone and uh, and like I say I I keep him plenty of food in here because this is this and the sassafras is the only thing that he eats uh, just like the pipe vine swallowtail only eats the pipe vine Dutchman's pipe vine uh, kind of let me get this guy covered back up because I'm real particular with these and uh, do this like this and then we zip him up my wife makes these sleeves they're about 18 inches long and they're made from a thing called no see them cloth uh, we'll take this guy off right here there's there's not gonna be a caterpillar in here I don't believe there might be uh, um, we'll pull this off actually the chrysalis is in my bag but this is where he would have been hid, right here. He folds the leaf up like a taco. And this is where he hides. And he doesn't eat the leaf he lives in. He goes out and eats the other leaves. And then he comes back. And then, uh, since he's up in here, we'll turn this sleeve wrong side out. And I'll carry this in the house. And in about 10 days, this will be a butterfly. This is what the spice bush swallowtail chrysalis looks like. Now, keep in mind, butterflies make chrysalis or pupa. Moths make cocoons. There's a difference. So you'll never, if you call it a cocoon, it's a moth. And if it's a butterfly, it's going to be a chrysalis or a pupa. So, uh, I don't know. We'll look while we're here to see if there's anybody else out here. You have to really look for them because they hide. But I don't see another leaf folded up. Do you see one, Miss Sandy? I was looking, but I don't see one, Tim. Uh, so, anyway, we'll just kind of go through here. Uh, watch your step. This is kind of the lower part of the area here that we don't get to pay enough attention to. Uh, but we'll walk down through here. Uh, we were talking earlier about a very invasive, noxious weed this year called mulberry weed. This is a small one. Uh, this weed starts producing seed at a half an inch tall. And it will produce up to 72,000 seeds per plant. Every time the wind blows, every time you touch it, it spreads the seeds. As you can see right here, these little P-shaped things are the seed heads and they spread everywhere and generally the root system will be half as long as the plant is above the ground uh, so we spend a lot of time pulling this weed uh, it's hard to control uh, you can see that it's hard to control right here there's a good bit of it right there uh, this is another spice bush and uh, I thought we'd look at it while we were down here just to see I don't see anything but we'll walk on around through here hydrangeas daylilies the ones we call the spiders daylilies are what they say they are they're daylilies they bloom one day and then they turn to this and then uh, one of the things I like to do every morning with my morning coffee is to walk out through here with a bucket and my coffee and deadhead. Because if you don't deadhead, ones like this right here might get on a new one, just like this one did, and keep it from opening up. So, rice paper plant. Uh, a lady gave me this. I'm not sure she was a friend anymore because when you get a rice paper plant, it's very invasive. It's very, it has rhizomes. It multiplies under the ground. The first one I planted was those over there. You see how the rhizomes run underground. This is about 20 foot away. So, <clears throat> through here. One of the things we talk about in one of the presentations I do is this. This is called wormwood, uh, and this is the variegated version. It is a host plant for the butterflies. 
it is also the plant that they make absinthe from and uh, I'm told there's maybe two people left in the world that have the original recipe to make absinthe if you're a Highlander fan one of the immortals drank absinthe and he was really kind of way out there but he could still use a sword in the show so but anyway uh, you can uh, get absinthe in the liquor store but it's not the real deal this is like a drug here it's so potent I wanted to show you the good the bad and the ugly daylilies are gorgeous plants and they produce pick flowers all through the month of July and sometime into August but as they start to go this is what you get here once they turn brown like this you can just tug on them and they come right out but you can see this one had one two three four five blooms on it so they're covered up in blooms and then they also make seed pods now why anybody would want to plant daylily seeds I will never know because every third year you dig these up you split them down and divide them out and replant them and you got three and four times as many plants most of the time when you buy a daylily you get what we call two fans which would be like this much that's two fans and they would be cut right here and this is all the green you would have and you would hope that it would be what the guy said it was going to be this is a sassafras tree this is also another host plant for the spice bush swallowtail and you're going to get to see something really cool here i know i sound like a little kid but i just get amazed at this kind of stuff yeah. sandy would you hold on to this i don't want to tear that up uh, inside this bag is another caterpillar and this one is what they call the orange dog we caterpillar and uh, I'm gonna take this off so you can see it check right here at this stage he's called the orange dog a friend of mine Joyce Wilkie Inman calls him the orange dog caterpillar and you see the dots on his head he wants you to think he's a snake but he also uh, hides in a leaf just the folded leaf here's his leaf right here see he doesn't eat his leaf you open it up and he's not there but that's where he'll go back and hide when he's done eating for the day uh, let's see if we can get him back in the sleeve here because I really want to protect these guys. I don't get many of these, but I really protect them when I do because uh, I enjoy watching these guys come out and I turn them loose. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I hope for another one. I wish we could find a new one somewhere so you could see him, the new guy but you really have to catch them when they're early on because the spiders love them too mm -hmm. like right here see Baby. the spider found him oh, no. and got him so but you can see where someone's been eating here mm -hmm. but oh wait hold on nope spider got that one too See, you have to catch them early because the spiders will get them. Uh, the spiders really like them as food. Here's another one. No, that's just a roll leaf that's dying. Uh, okay. So much for that idea. This is, see, you can see the spider web here where this guy was going to hide. And what I do when I find him like that. I just kind of rub him up and roll him out uh, here this hydrangea you know it looks bad but what happened here is we had so much rain this year the blooms got so heavy these blooms get so heavy and they just fall over there's nothing you can do about it uh, I wish there was the one next to it 
beautiful blue and pale green blooms. So as we kind of cruise on up through here. What is this, Tim? What is what? This. That is going to be another beauty berry. Oh, is it? But it's going to be the one with white berries. Okay. Uh, it's not really a favorite. It was something one year back years ago. Y'all will remember when Wesley had Hooters mm -hmm. uh, and not the eating place. Mm -hmm. uh, but every year at the end of the year, when he had plants left over, I would buy everything he had. And this was one year when I bought about 200 of his plants just so that he didn't have to overwinter them or try to take care of them. Yeah. So, here again, uh, I will never find a caterpillar on this. This is called a tulip poplar. And uh, it's also a host plant for one of the swallowtails, the giant or uh, the zebra. And uh, if we're lucky, we'll get to see a zebra. He's white and black where the tiger is yellow and black. So uh, let's just kind of wander up through here. Azaleas were the original thing to go down here. We have hostas everywhere, hydrangeas everywhere, uh, coleus. Uh, Japanese maples are a big thing that I really like. I love Japanese maples. I have about a hundred of them here in the yard. Now, this PG hydrangea, uh, see that beautiful bloom? Now, the bees and the butterflies and the hummingbirds will love this. And during certain times of the day, they will just simply cover it up. Now, this is the first time this one's bloomed in three years, and we're kind of happy about that. Uh, like I say, it's called a PG hydrangea. It's underplanted here with a Japanese maple and lace leaf. Like I say, I love my Japanese maples. You can see another one over here. And if you pan in here, you will find the cranium lily in with it. And then, of course, there's elephant ears everywhere. They just kind of decided they wanted to be everywhere. We have ferns up underneath. Uh, another fern. Uh, this is a hydrangea that I'm grooming to be a tree. A tree type. Then over here we have another lace leaf. Another PG. And then we have several lace caps. And I'm hoping, and you're going to have to use your zoom on this up here these guys and we may have to go around and find the white one this is the rose of sharon and uh, you see here this is called a silver spotted skipper and uh, he's looking for nectar uh, let's walk right up through here watch your step you might find more bees here yeah here we go uh, of course, you see the silver spotted skippers everywhere, and then you see the bee. This is one of his plants. He'll crawl up in there, and if you get a close look, you'll see his butt just dusted in pollen. That's what he's doing. He'll get all covered up in pollen. Then he'll move up to the next one, and then the next one. And he's looking, and they've about pollen these out. But, you know, you can see they're everywhere in here. Uh... That one that we were just chasing flew up in here. And then the silver spotted skippers. Uh, I was hoping I could catch him. But you can see the bees. This is a great nectar plant for bees. And this is the white version of the uh, Rose of Sharon. Oh, catch this guy right here. That's a tiger swallowtail. He is beautiful. And he likes hardwoods. He likes rue. And he likes... Uh, Citrus. He likes these daily leaves too. Yeah, he's looking for nectar. And then yesterday he was really on these daylilies right here. And uh, you can see from the, the old stems how many blooms were on these plants. So, uh, more Japanese maples. Oh, I love that. The emerald lace, these are two miniatures. That's a big Tamukiyama there. The one over there is the original Japanese maple to this little place. Uh, it's called an Orangeola. And uh, it's my first one. Uh, while we're here, this plant, 
right here. This is called Rue. Alright, the tiger swallowtail and the giant swallowtail like this plant. Uh, is it this, bloom? No, it doesn't bloom. They just like the This is their host plant. Leaves. This is what they eat. This is their favorite plant. Uh, basically, what happens here, and I don't see any caterpillars on it yet. They come late in the season. Uh, but you can tell when they get here, they will strip it. There will be no leaves left on it. Uh, this plant, if you grow this in your garden, you do need to be aware that it is a skin irritant. Uh, it can cause your skin to break out. And you can get a rash similar to poison oak, poison ivy, just not as bad. Uh, right here we have more fennel. And like I say, you see caterpillars everywhere here. Uh, this guy is not long from making a chrysalis. Uh, and then right here you can uh, see if we can get this guy out for you to see all right can you get him there he is in a chrysalis you'll notice that the black swallowtail chrysalis points upward where a lot of chrysalis hang down this is their favorite plant in my landscape that's why we plant so much fill fennel uh, the caterpillars will be everywhere if you can see this guy he's an itsy bitsy he's about the second in star and you can see ants like this plant too but for the most part you don't have to worry about ants with this plant and with uh, them attacking the caterpillars they don't usually go after them but as like I say, you see that little bitsy there, you see a little bit bigger there, a little bit bigger there, a little bit bigger there. And up here you got two more. Uh, they're starting to be, well oh, actually three more. Look at there. So, swallowtails are actually my favorite caterpillar. The monarchs are Miss Janet's. Uh, she likes them. For me, they're a lot of trouble. Uh, here. Uh, he needs to turn around if you want to see what kind of butterfly he is. But he's nectaring here on the bud leah. Uh, and I know I can't catch him. Uh, they're all, if they ever see your shadow, they're gone. Here are more lace cap hydrangeas and abelias. This is more of a nectaring place here. You'll find the silver spotted skippers all down in here. And uh, all such as that. Hostas. Uh, you see that one there. That one is going to be a, uh, I think it's going to be a black, no, it's going to be a pipe vine. Not pipe vine, but a spice bush. I get these confused. Some of them look so much alike. So, and as you can see, the pipe, the passion vine kind of grows everywhere. Uh, we're going on around. We'll see some passion vine around here. For real? Uh, what looks all green now but in the beginning of the year thrift is one of the first plants that the butterflies and the bees have to nectar on and it kind of goes along with uh, thrift and uh, henbit which most people consider as a weed so they kind of do that and if you go up through here <coughs> you see kind of some of the things we do around here is like this Japanese maple wasn't doing real well. So I cut the top out of it and I made it, I'm going to bonsai it. And uh, I'm going to keep the root system pulled back. I've planted red enduro uh, verbena in here with it. Uh, Autumn Joy sedum and some other sedums with it. A weed. Uh, another weed. Another weed another weed so you see there's weeds everywhere anyone that says they have a weed free garden I can safely call them a liar <laughs> uh, if you uh, we'll kind of talk about something else later but anyway this is one of my favorite hydrangeas this was a gift from proven winners this is called firelight when it first starts to bloom it looks like this 
it turns solid white. As it starts to age, it gets a little pale green and then it will turn crimson. This fall, it will be solid crimson. And that's why they call it Fire Bright or Firelight, one of the two. So, and as you can see, when I got this three years ago, it was about this tall. And a little pot about that big around. So you can see how it grew. As you wander through, we do different things, like just an old storm door, an old iron door. And this is passion vine. And I don't think you're going to find any caterpillars on this one. But we'll find some around here. Uh, cone flowers. They're starting to go by the wayside, wayside. You can see the way these have been eaten up. There's caterpillars on them because cone flowers are a, another host plant for uh, butterflies. One of my favorite times is when Dr. Gary Bachman came out one day. And he said, wow, your, corn your cone flowers are just like mine. They're all eat up. They're dying from some disease. And I got tickled. And uh, right now I can't find any caterpillars. But at that time, they were covered in little black caterpillars. And I said, this is why. Because these will make butterflies. So, milkweed. Now, here's a good point. You can tell I use no insecticides on my property. Because you can see right here. See all these little yellow things? These are called milkweed aphids. They won't hurt a thing. They don't get on any other plant other than milkweed. They don't eat it, they just live here. And uh, the caterpillars don't mind it. And uh, in case you're wondering, the reason they call it milkweed, let's do it on one of the bigger ones, but uh, volunteer cantaloupes, everything grows here. The tropical milkweed has the yellow and orange blooms on it. Over there, we have zinnias and cone flowers all growing out there. The big leaf milkweed, the other milkweeds, uh, this is uh, another passion vine and somewhere right here this is a gulf fritillary now this is an itsy bitsy this guy was just hatched out this morning uh, if you can kind of find him there but this guy is today is his first day of life the first thing he does after he hatches out is he eats his egg that's his first meal then he will eat this leaf and then he will move on to another leaf. And uh, there, the Gulf Fritillary and the Variegated Fritillary both use the same plant. So, on up here. Now, what, uh, back to the milkweed. What I really wanted to show you about milkweed, what people don't understand, and you really need to know about this all milkweed plants are poisonous. They're all poisonous. When you pull a leaf off, you see this white milky substance? Mm -hmm. That's the milkweed uh, sap in there. And uh, this is what the caterpillars eat. The caterpillars are poisonous. The butterflies are poisonous. A bird will grab one of these grab one of these caterpillars or grab one of the butterflies, take a bite out of it. Of course, the caterpillar's gone. The butterfly will survive. Red wasps are immune to this poison. The thing that humans need to know, and when you've got children around, and this is one of the reasons we have all this stuff here, is we teach children. We buy, we, I have two grandchildren. They're 9 and 16 right now. One will soon be 10. The other one will soon be 17. They've been playing out here amongst all these poisonous plants since the day they were born. And we taught them from the beginning that they were poisonous and that you don't put them in your mouth. You don't put your hands in your mouth ever. You, when you're done, you go in the house, soap and water. Wash those hands. If you get this in your eyes, it can cause temporary to permanent blindness. Right here, I'm let him nectar. Good. And then I carry him back in the house and put him back in this for the night. Because I want him to live his normal lifetime, which is about two weeks. A caterpillar, I mean, a butterfly, a, a butterfly normally lives about two weeks. He's kind of stroking. We'll put him back in here. And he'll settle down. You saw this guy jumping around a minute ago. He's ready to make a chrysalis. And, uh, but anyway. And I'm going to have to sit down. I got a bit hot. Yeah. Uh, but as you can see, he's got a bad wing. One wing actually didn't form. 
So this is what I do when I find deformed butterflies. I keep them and uh, I take them out during the daytime and let them get a little nectar and I let them crawl around on me while I walk around the yard and get some sunshine. And then at night I put them back in this. I've got several of these little hamper things, some of them bigger than others. So anyway, we'll turn this back over so he can't get out again. And we'll let this guy hang because he prefers to hang yeah. while he's making a chrysalis. Huh. And uh, he's another one of those, they hang upside down, but they they don't hang like the monarch, which hangs down and swings. And uh, we'll have to do monarchs later because they're just not here yet. Now, <clears throat> now he just evolved into a butterfly. Is he about to lay a... It's probably never mated. If it's mm -hmm. a female, it never mated mm -hmm. because we have pipe vine in here. That's mm -hmm. a pipe vine swallowtail. Mm -hmm. And we have pipe vine in there. If it were a female and she had mated, she would lay eggs. So uh, this little guy is going to lay one of these. He's going to make one of these? Yes. A, this is a chrysalis? Uh, now this is chrysalis it? is a spice bush. This one will be brown or green. Okay. And the yellow swallowtails, the eastern swallowtails both lay green and brown chrysalis. Now, it seems, now this one will come out this year. Uh, this chrysalis will come out in about 10 days. This will be a butterfly. Will you put him in here? No, he's going to let I'm it just, be I'll in just the house. hang this up in the house. And uh, when he comes out, he'll hang on to that chrysalis for a couple of hours until he gets his wings spread. And then uh, when they dry, uh, then he'll fly off. And he can fly around the house. Butterflies make no mess. They don't poop. They don't do anything except fly around in nectar. Then when they mate, they lay eggs. The caterpillar is called frass. Uh, caterpillar's byproduct is frass. So uh, they do that. And I put these sticks in here because Normally, this caterpillar would have crawled up that stick somewhere and made his crustless on it. I, he's being hard-headed. I don't know what his deal is. <laughs> so, anyway, that's kind of the story there, the gist of it, the tour of the yard. I know it's hot. Uh, maybe the next time we do this, we'll try to do it about 9-ish in the morning. Uh, I thought it was going to rain this morning because I started to call y'all and tell you to come on. But I was afraid it was going to rain. It kept saying it was a rain cloud out there. Uh, but anyway, we're on the Burris plantation. I encourage these folks to do this and plant these plants around the city, around your home, and then take pictures of it and post them online so that we can snag them and put them on the Bloomtown and flower growers of Mississippi. Uh, not only are they great pollinator plants and they attract all your pollinators. Uh, your tubular flowers are really great for your hummingbirds that can hover and stick their long beak in there. Flat flowers, even some of the tubulars are great for the butterflies. They like to land on something and their proboscis is rolled up and they like to roll it out and grab the nectar. The bees like anything, like what you saw with the Rosa Sharon, gladiolas, cannas, anything. They just get up in it and roll around until they get pollen all over them. <clears throat> and I've got pictures of them around where they are just covered in pollen. Thank you, Tim. Yes, ma'am. This Anytime. has been a delight. Even though it was hot. Even though it was hot. So. Your butterflies are beautiful and so are all of your blooms. I wish you could have been here earlier in the year when everything was popped out and blooming, but uh, as we call this the midsummer ragtag. There's always next year. Well, there will always be later this year. There will be more blooms. Everything will get it. deadheaded. Now that y'all have been, everything will get deadheaded back and get ready to bloom again. Very good. Thank you again. You're welcome. Anytime. This is Sandy Schattinger with Hill Country Network. Thanks for joining us. This is that gardening guy, the village idiot. <laughs> See what it, oh, we got you. <laughs> <laughs>
Clover Reel.